Five pictures from the home of Sean Combs, also known as Diddy. HSI is on the scene right now. We also do have video from his home in Los Angeles. HSI Los Angeles is on. Puffy might be the destination for anybody going nowhere. He's not wrong. Y'all are f Nobody survived. Now it was this documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even enter. There's some serious tension brewing for music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, with rumors swirling that 50 Cent might be dropping a bombshell. Word on the street is that 50 Cent teased about unleashing a documentary called Surviving Diddy in the wake of Homeland Security's surprise raid on Diddy's properties. So, what exactly is going on? For context, Sean Diddy Combs' three properties have been raided by federal agents. Earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation, with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available, a Homeland Security Investigations representative said in a statement to People. On Monday afternoon, TMZ reported that federal cops arrived at the rapper's L.A. home with helicopters above the property. The outlet says the case is in relation to human T allegations. A video from Fox 11 showed Diddy's sons Justin and Christian King Combs in handcuffs outside of their Beverly Hills home. The first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say less than 10 minutes. In any case, many people are claiming that the officers raided Diddy's home in order to gather any possible evidence that could potentially link him to the many allegations that he is currently facing. We will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for his depraved conduct. Douglas Wigdor, attorney for Cassie Ventura and Jane Doe, who each previously filed lawsuits against Diddy, told People in a statement. So, how is 50 Cent involved in all this? Well, last year, a representative for 50 Cent confirmed to TMZ that the 48-year-old rapper's production company G-Unit Films and Television is developing a documentary about the allegations against Combs. The rep said proceeds from the documentary will benefit benefit victims of S.A. and R. Jackson teased a snippet of the documentary on Instagram on Wednesday. In the clip, former Bad Boy Records rapper Mark Curry said Combs would spike bottles of Moet with a substance that would make women at nightclubs slippery. Curry alleged that Combs would tell his friends and associates not to drink from certain bottles. Also, while promoting the documentary, Jackson took aim at rapper Rick Ross, as well as Combs. He shared lyrics from Ross's verse on the Rocco song Uo Eno, where Ross raps, Put Molly all in her champagne, she ain't even know it. I took her home and I enjoyed that, she ain't even know it. The whole idea of making a surviving Diddy documentary started as a joke on the internet, but the idea has since gained massive support. On November 18th, the Bad Boy label and record producer's poster with him sitting on a couch and posing a rose on Facebook with the title Surviving Puffy and the logo of Netflix on it. Evidently, netizens speculated that someone was making a documentary on the music mogul. Meanwhile, 51st insinuated that he was considering making a movie called Surviving P. Diddy on November 20th. His suggestion came in the wake of Cassie's lawsuit against the Grammy winner, followed by another lawsuit filed against Diddy's colleague and former Bad Boy label president Harve Pierre on the grounds of AB. In fact, 50 Cent took to his Instagram and posted a since-deleted screenshot of a headline about Pierre's lawsuit followed by the caption, I told you they were coming in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is a movie, Surviving P. Diddy or Diddy, Do It or Not, executive produced by Curtis 50 Cent Jackson coming soon. While the fake Netflix poster of Diddy may have been fan-made, 50 Cent meant that the film on the No Way Out rapper would be under legal scrutiny, just like the 2019 documentary titled Surviving R. Kelly. It was made on the R&B singer, who has since been convicted and imprisoned following AB allegations similar to those of Diddy. It is also noteworthy that 50 Cent's post on the alleged Diddy documentary comprised two other related headlines. Diddy's clothing brand Sean John being phased out of Macy's after two-decade partnership from Radar Online and Diddy's legal battle over tequila brand put on ice until 2024 inches from Billboard. Anyway. Aside from hinting that he was thinking of making a documentary on the Bad Boy label producer, the Get Rich or Die Trying rapper also trolled Diddy when he settled the Cassie lawsuit. He joked that the defendant paid that money real quick, but not quick enough to stop other women he has allegedly A-B'd over the years. 
In any case, if 50 Cent actually releases the documentary, things will get really ugly for Diddy's case. You see, this is exactly what happened to R. Kelly. For context, in the wake of his sentencing to 30 years in prison for STF ficking and racketeering last summer, disgraced rapper R. Kelly filed an appeal in his New York federal S crimes case. Documents obtained by TMZ revealed that the 56-year-old artist had put forth multiple arguments in his bid to overturn his conviction, ranging from assertions of a potentially biased jury to claims of being misled about the ages of the minors he had relationships with. The appeal, filed by his attorney Jennifer Bonjean, sought to have the convictions reversed or to secure a new trial. Kelly's legal team contended that the government had failed to meet its burden of proof during the trial, despite the jury finding him guilty on all counts following nearly six weeks of proceedings. A key point in Kelly's appeal was the allegation that at least two jurors had watched Surviving R. Kelly, a documentary released in 2019 which featured accounts from his accusers. His lawyers argued that this documentary, funded by Jay-Z and allegedly provided to the jurors, could have biased their judgment, especially given Kelly's legal history with Jay-Z. Moreover, Kelly disputed the ages of the girls involved, claiming that some were at least 18 years old when their interactions with him began. His legal team asserted that in cases where the girls were minors, Kelly had been misled about their ages. Kelly's defense also contested the admissibility of certain evidence presented during the trial, arguing that irrelevant details about his personal life unfairly influenced the jury. They maintained that discussions about his history, preferences, and past relationships were prejudicial and unrelated to the charges he faced. Additionally, Kelly raised objections to the testimony provided by his former associates, alleging that they had misrepresented facts and testified on matters beyond their knowledge. Now, Diddy is scared that once 50 releases a surviving Diddy documentary, things will not go well for him and might alter the court's judgment. Well, it's not just 50 Cent that Diddy should be worried about. Seems like a lot of his former crew have been leaving him hanging, and they're not keeping quiet about it. They've been spilling the beans on all the sketchy stuff he either made them do or they saw him doing. For starters, we have Keefe D who was arrested last year after being linked to the death of rapper Tupac Shakur. Keefe D claims that Diddy allegedly offered him $1 million to carry out a hit on the renowned rap figures Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight. This former member of a Southern gang has openly confessed his active involvement in the incident, driven by the promise of a million dollar reward. However, it's now revealed that he never received a single cent in compensation. I just never got any money. Never. For anything. Nothing. Not even a pair of Sean John draws. Keefe D also acknowledged that he informed Puffy that he was running low on ammunition as their firearms were being confiscated during a police raid on his house. I said I was just going to get some bread from Puff to get us some guns because they kept on raiding our houses, taking our guns. And there was informants that was listening to this whole conversation. That's not the end of it. Keefe proceeded to recount the altercation that unfolded on that ill-fated night of September 13th, 1996. You said that as you're driving up towards the, towards the BMW, with Suge driving and Tupac in the passenger seat. According to Dee's account, the shooting initiated when Keefe observed Tupac reaching into his pocket, leading him to assume that Tupac was retrieving a weapon. Keefe Dee said that he was the passenger in the white Cadillac on the night of the incident. However, he refused to name other suspects but confirmed that the shooter was Orlando Anderson, his nephew. Keefe made this confession by saying that he is dying of cancer. To add an intriguing twist, Reggie Wright Jr. shared his perspective on the theory suggesting Diddy's involvement in Tupac's tragic death. Out there and said that um, he met with Puff at a sandwich shop and Puff told him he would give him a million dollars. In another revealing interview, Keefe D disclosed the details of his four encounters with Sean Diddy Combs, each intricately linked to the Tupac M saga. These clandestine meetings took place in San Diego, Anaheim, Irvine, and Las Vegas, and they have raised significant suspicions in connection to the M investigation. According to Keefe D, during these secretive rendezvous, Puffy allegedly discussed a chilling plan that involved the D of both Tupac Shakur and Shug Knight. Which of those four is it when you talk to him about murdering Tupac? It was really about both of them, either one of them. It was uh, Tupac and Shug, you mean? Yeah. The interview takes a dramatic turn when Keefe D delves into a crucial moment at a party in Anaheim, where he claims to have been in the company of Puffy. 
This scene seems straight out of a movie because at this gathering, Puffy allegedly made a shocking statement. He purportedly expressed his readiness to go to great lengths to remove Tupac and Knight from the equation. Give us anything for them dudes head, you know? Yeah. We'll give you anything for these guys' head? Yeah. Yeah, he said it in front of all those people, I can't believe it. In the interview, Keefe D recounts a series of chilling encounters with Puffy that paint a dark and suspenseful picture. At an Anaheim party, Keefe D noticed Puffy's visible anxiety, and it was clear that something had set off this sudden urgency. The room was filled with influential figures from the hip-hop world and beyond, but the atmosphere was anything but relaxed. It was like a heavy cloud of tension hanging over the gathering. Keefe D vividly describes the scene, underlining Puffy's apparent desperation. I'm the only one alive who can really tell you the story about the Tupac K, Keefe D said in this 2018 series, explaining that he was finally opening up about what allegedly happened because he had cancer. I have nothing else to lose, he added. All I care about is the truth. Several months later, at Greenblatt's Deli, Keefe D alleges that Puffy's quest intensified, leaving no doubt about his desire to see Tupac and Biggie eliminated. During this conversation, Puffy supposedly offered a hefty sum of money for the hits, to which Keefe D responded by demanding a million dollars for the job. He said, that pissed combs off, Keefe D claimed. They allegedly settled the terms of the hit at Greenblatt's Deli, where Keefe D asked for $1 million to K both Tupac and Knight. Keefe D alleged he told Diddy, we'll wipe their A out quick, man, it's nothing. The intensification of the situation left Keefe D absolutely convinced of Puffy's unwavering commitment. It was Puffy who initiated the notion of a $1 million payout for the demise of Tupac and Knight. Keefe D vividly remembers Puffy agreeing to this sum and sealing the deal with a handshake, an admission that strongly implicates Puffy in a deeply unsettling conspiracy. This handshake, symbolizing a pact that had the potential to reshape the trajectory of hip-hop history, stands as a chilling reminder of the energy enigmatic forces that sometimes lie beneath the surface of the music industry. In any case, if Diddy ever gets dragged to court, he might be looking at some serious time, just like R. Kelly, especially now that 50 Cent seems dead set on cooking up the surviving Diddy documentary. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.